Hey guys, welcome back. I wanted to do a quick update of my Hobonichi Weeks planner. This has been sort of like an everyday carry for me and I've had a couple requests to do a flip through of December and just kind of chat about how this has been working. So that is what we're going to be doing today. I am still in love with this planner. This is a Hobonichi Weeks Mega, so it does have more notes pages in the back. I have it in the latte cover. I do have it in a Hobonichi clear cover on cover that I so some elastic too just so it would have a closure and I will link my pen and my ink down below but I do all of my writing with a uni jet stream and 0.7 it's the only pen that I use when it comes to Tomoe River paper because I am a smearing mess otherwise and that drives me bonkers so haven't changed up much in the front other than adding an old old Polaroid of my husband and I still using sticky notes here as like an inbox quick notes this actually was really helpful over the holidays i was helping my mom out who had surgery so i made like grocery lists and things like that as she mentioned things she needed so that worked out really well i am still using this as a weight and measurement log that works out really well for me i love having a habit tracker and this is what my December monthly looked like. I really love how this turned out. It felt very functional and it's a quick at a glance look for me to go back and see when everything happened. I did fill in some of these events sort of retrospectively because I didn't plan on doing it that day, but it's something that we did do that day. So I did add a few more things in as well. I only had a couple stickers. I layered a little ornament from Caffeine and Paper Co. over a plaid clear sticker from Sterling and Ink. I drew this in myself with a brush pen and a gel pen and this is Tombow 228 it's like a gray green color I did a habit tracker down here I mentioned before I don't really prefer a monthly habit tracker when it comes to setting my goals I really like looking at things at a year-long basis or a very short window like a weekly habit tracker but these are more things that aren't necessarily goal related but I just need to check them off to force myself to do it if that makes sense so just things that aren't quite part of my everyday routine but they're not necessarily like something I'm really working on I just am highly checkbox motivated I did a like single habit tracker for to track my workouts because that was more of a goal related item. I did an inbox of all the things I need to get done in the month, kind of high level. And most of them I got checked off. I did go ahead and migrate a few to the months forward. But overall, this is very functional. And Moving into January, I did essentially the same thing. I still have a habit tracker. I updated my specific habit tracker to my yoga challenge because I do the yoga with Adrian 30 day challenge every year. I have a running inbox of things that I need to do this month. And this month looks a lot busier just because I simply added in our yoga sessions from the calendar that Adrian releases with her 30 day challenge. And the only reason I did that is because I didn't want to create a separate a tra separate tracker in the back just to check that off when I already had a monthly calendar where I could put in the times. I like seeing it just so I know how much time I need to carve out for that challenge. So not sure if I will do it this way again. I think if I'm really going to stick with yoga this year, I may do separate trackers in the back just because this does feel like my month is a little bit more full compared to last month. But I figured I had the blank space, so I might as well use it. I'm using Tombow 992 in this spread. And again, I pulled in a sticker from Caffeine and Paper Co. And otherwise, more or less the same high level pre-planning is happening within my monthlies. Okay. So flipping to my weekly, some of these you've probably already seen if you follow me over on Instagram, but I thought I would just kind of flip through them so you guys could see what these are looking like. I'm still using them the same way, all day events and appointments, day specific tasks and notes, daily highlights, a running inbox for the week, and I will put this in kind of like preemptively. I do all my pre-planning with tasks here, a habit tracker, I tracked meals, 
in December. I also track the weather. You'll see that I kind of switch things up as well. I'm still pulling in a few stickers every now and then, but trying not to go overboard. I really love how the week of Christmas looked and I honestly just like left a lot of blank space, but keeping it pretty simple. And I'm honestly surprised at how much I can fit within these pages. It works out really well for me actually. I had some blank space, so I put down like an affirmation. You see where I switched to tracking the weather and I'm still doing the page numbers of my daily pages that correspond down here. And I got that idea from Mel, uh, Melanie from Addicted to Planning. So that is what December looked like. So moving into January, I am essentially doing the same thing. I wanted to try a week without the weekly highlights just to see if I preferred how that looked. I think I do like having my daily highlights in a separate column as compared to within this space because that leaves me more room for to-dos when I do add them over here. This week I kind of just combine them. So next week I might change that, but really the only big change I'm making between December and January is instead of doing only all day events and appointments on the left hand side i'm now moving like my date specific appointments into this leftmost column as well because now that i'm home and not going anywhere again um those appointments are kind of like that's the big thing for today and i kind of want to see those broken out versus like just all day events because otherwise i think these are going to end up being pretty empty for me moving forward I'm still pre-planning at a month-long basis, so flipping through January, you'll see that I just have a bunch of pen down for those pre-planned events, appointments, and tasks, but I have left February blank because I do like to sit down uh, at the beginning of the month and reference my monthly insert and then just kind of move all those tasks and events in at one time, and then I just add things in as I think of them, and that works really well for me, just staying on top of tasks and breaking things down into bite-sized pieces that I can kind of you know address from week to week. Okay, so I did flip through my notes pages last time, but I'll kind of just give you an update. I am using an index. I'm recognizing that I am probably going to use, use these two pages like very quickly. So I think once I fill those two pages up, I'll probably flip to like the last notes pages and then just start indexing back to front to see if that works because I think I'm definitely going to fill these up pretty quickly just based off the rate that I am at. Um, my habit trackers are still going really well. Um, as you can see, here's my workout tracker. I describe the trackers and how I set them up in my Hobonichi Week setup, so I'll link that one above for you guys if you want to check that out. But staying on track of this, I've got December all the way through November of 2021 since I would anticipate starting a new Hobonichi Weeks in December of um, 2021 for my 2022 week. So it's kind of weird to say, but I really love the December start because this was so nice to have everything I needed kind of already set up going from like Christmas to New Year's because truthfully my year end is... My year end is Thanksgiving, guys, because after that, I'm basically like checking out for the end of the year. I don't know about you guys, but really love doing my daily logs back here. I've been doing a ton of doodling. I'm still pulling in stickers. I've got collections and notes and other things that I need. I'm having a lot of fun with this. I am liking that combo between a bullet journal type of feel and the memory keeping spread. I'm adding in journaling here and there. I've got some stickers and memorabilia and overall just really enjoying this space. I feel like I'm way more creative with these types of logs as compared to within like my pocket rings because I don't ever keep anything within my ring planner so I don't really take the time to do any sort of like doodling or hand lettering. It's kind of like what do I need to get done and this has been like a good balance between it's mostly pen so it's still just what I need to get done but then at the end of the day I'm utilizing that blank space and being a little bit more creative and pulling in stickers because something about a bound book just screams archive me <laughs> to myself so um, I've added a few more tabs as well 
at the top here just to get me to a few spreads a little bit quicker that I didn't have last time. So I've got like a finance tab, my package tracker, and then my work spreads. Since I do kind of integrate work into my planners, even when I don't plan to, I also have a tab to my monthly, my weekly, and then my current daily log. So I can kind of see where I am at along with my habit trackers. The tabs I use are post-it brand repositionable tabs. I will We'll list that in the description bar since I do get asked about that as well but I have found that they don't tear up the Tomoe River paper at all and that's worked out pretty well for me over the last few years but that is a quick update of my Hobonichi weeks it is still primarily an everyday carry for me this and my pocket rings are currently interchangeable I'm just kind of grabbing whatever I am feeling like but after a solid month in this guy, I really think he's gonna last the year. But again, you just never know what's gonna happen when it comes to planners. So if you guys have any questions, let me know in the comments down below. If you've made it this long, thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you next time.